Hi, uh, good morning and welcome to the online instructor training cohort um, from the Office of Online Design and E-Learning. Um, before I start, I just wanted to make sure everybody can hear me and um, if you need to adjust your speaker volume, uh, just use the drop down menu next to the speaker icon and you can, um, you can do that. Uh, so as I mentioned already, um, our office is the online Office of Online Design and E-Learning under Outreach. And uh, today there are three presenters, including myself. Uh, I'm Paribat. Uh, we have emailed each other and sort of met each other in the online instructor training cohort. I'm an instructional designer uh, at Odell Online Design and E-Learning. And um, I work for a few different schools, but if you're an applied sciences instructor, then I'm your primary contact uh, or support uh, for uh, any kind of course design questions. Juan? Um, hi, I am Juan Natatra. I'm also an instructional designer, and uh, I will be a primary contact for those uh, who are in CWR um, in School of Education and um, the Department of Sociology for this cohort. Um, when I mention um, to some people that I am an instructional designer, they usually ask, like, so what do you do? Um, so I'm here to tell you that, you know, Pari and I are here to um, help you with your um, course design, help you structure your um, course content. Um, we can also help you with um, learning activities that will help engage students. And uh, we, we can also help you find the right tools, and we will help you along the way to transition from teaching face-to-face -to, -face to online. All right, thanks, Juan. And also with me uh, that you will meet later, we also have Catherine Holtman. She's the testing coordinator uh, for the Distance Education Testing Lab, and she takes care of all proctored testing needs for any online instructor. So you're going to meet her later, a little bit later on. So before we start, I wanted to uh, start with the agenda. I wanted to quickly launch a poll. And we just want to quickly ask you, how comfortable are you with using online technology, for example, Blackboard or audio, video, et cetera, in your online course? So if you can take a minute and go ahead and poll for us, it will give us some numbers uh, to work with. All right, so we have some results already, and I'm going to go ahead and close this poll out and open it up again later when we have some more participants. Okay, thank you. So moving on, uh, this is the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, we are not going to uh, take up too much of your time talking. Uh, the first 30 minutes will be spent talking. We will present something, and then uh, we'll open it up for an open discussion and Q&A session. Uh, first, we, I will talk about some online instructor support, where you will go if you need some uh, support in terms of building your online course or technical support, uh, you know, creating videos, etc. Uh, then Juan and I will uh, show you some examples from other courses. Um, these are courses uh, which, which, are, uh, which have some best practices embedded within them, so they have been sort of successful with online students, and so we would like to show you some of those. Uh, Catherine will then uh, talk to you about proctor testing and uh, some of the prerequisites for that. Um, she will let you know what she needs from you. Uh, I'll briefly talk about next steps, what to, where to go from here, and then, as I said, we'll open it up for a Q&A and open discussion where you'll have an opportunity to ask us questions, um, you know, or you know, even talk amongst each other. So. Uh, where do you go for support? So for our, all of our online instructors, we basically at Online Design and E-Learning, uh, as Juan mentioned earlier, we help you with your online course design. Uh, so if you have questions about how to structure your course, uh, what is the best practice in structuring discussions or course content, uh, then you go to, uh, then you contact your uh, designated instructional designer. And as I mentioned earlier, I work with Applied Sciences uh, um, and then, um, other schools like engineering and business, and Juan works with education, PWR, uh, journalism, sociology, etc. Um, if you have a question about proctor testing for your course, then uh, you contact Catherine Holtman, uh, and 
I will send you uh, these slides as well as all our contact info. Uh, so don't worry about jotting these down uh, right now. But just know that Catherine is the main contact person for factor testing. And we also have a, a really a good faculty resource website. And Juan is going to talk to you about that uh, right after the slide. Uh, she'll, she'll tell you sort of what it is and what it can help you with. Um, I wanted to point out that uh, although we do have access to Blackboard and can help you with your course design, etc., in Blackboard, uh, we do not have access to grades or uh, students, users, you know, user enrollment, etc. So if you need any help with uh, tech support regarding, especially regarding grades or student enrollment, etc., then you have to contact our friends at uh, Faculty Technology Development Center, uh, FTDC, and uh, they're really easy to remember. Blackboard at Ole Miss so those are the go-to people for that. And finally, um, for Adobe Connect, and Adobe Connect is this, uh, this system right now that we are in, that we are talking to you on. If you would like to use Adobe Connect for uh, your own class, you know, to have uh, live synchronous sessions with your students, then Faye Walter is sort of the online, um, online Adobe Connect guru on campus, and she can help you uh, get an account and uh, set it up and sort of train you how to use it, etc. Uh, it, but it, it is a paid service. Juan? Um, thanks, Pari. So um, just a little bit of an overview for the Faculty Resources website. Um, I'm not going to show you the website, but um, here's the address that you can um, go and check it out yourself. So it's online.blog.olmis.edu. And on there, um, we have resources. For, you know, we have Blackboard tutorial videos, some that we developed ourselves, and some that come directly from Blackboard. Um, we also have other tutorials and blogs, um, something that's relating to um, creating accessible documents. Um, we have course banners that we've already loaded up into your sandboxes. Um, also on the website, um, under faculty development, we have um, live, live webinars and workshops that we offer for free to uh, the university community. Um, when you get on there, um, you will be able to register for any available um, workshops or webinar. Um, also for faculty is our new travel grants. and. If you have a plan to attend a conference, whether it's distance learning conference or e-learning or online learning related kind of conference, um, stop by the website and see if um, you might be able to get grants from um, our, our office. Um, the, the last one that, um, that is just another thing that's on the website is a test settings checklist and that would pertain to people who will be um, having their tests um, proctored uh, with us. And Catherine will probably uh, talk to you a little, a little bit more about uh, the test set setting checklist le later on um, when, we, when we get to the uh, distance education testing lab section. All right. so. Um we're going to jump right into examples from other courses. And what we have here are some, some best practices that other course uh, instructors have adopted that have worked really well for them. Um, so uh, there's an example of a course introductory video from Psychology 201. Uh, then there is, we'll show you uh, course structure from Writing 250. And uh, this is a course that won our Paragon Award for Excellence in Distance uh, Learning and Teaching this past year. Victoria Bryan, we had an award ceremony for her uh, just a couple of days ago on Friday. So um, she, she has had uh, good, good success with her students using her course structure and the way she has structured her, um, her lessons. Uh, we also have uh, an example of lesson content from uh, Yvonne Liebenberg's course from Finance uh, 331. Uh, there is a, there's an actual lecture capture sample from Lori Bull from uh, Education. Uh, some of you may, uh, may know her, work with her. Uh, uh, we have an example of uh, how to set up discussion boards for maximum student engagement uh, from Social Work 575 taught by Marian Tudor. 
and then finally uh, how to use uh, how to give feedback to students uh, in in more than just sort of written feedback or uh, email feedback or something like that so we'll show you an example of, of uh, how Victoria uses video feedback in her writing 250 course Okay, the first example that I'll show you is a course introduction video. And let me just um, quickly load that video here. Hi, I'm, Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Caldwell. Caldwell. I will be, I will be your psychology, psychology teacher this semester. In the past, In the past I've taught classes, classes such as abnormal, abnormal psychology, psychology, social psychology, psychology um, but, um, but my favorite, my favorite is always, is always in general, general psychology. psychology. I also, I also work, work in the Office, in the office of Research, research compliant, compliant, and I come from an Ole Miss family. I did my undergraduate and graduate work here, and I even got married in the Grove. This semester, I hope you will learn some general concepts in psychology. Most people find at least some topics of psychology to be very interesting because psychology is about us. I also hope you will learn to think critically, and um, I hope we have some good discussions because I'd like to learn about your opinions. Okay, that's just uh, to give and you I come from an so It's basically just a very brief introduction of your course. Uh, and um, the purpose of this is to put your face um, up front for the students to see. So um, in a way, it makes it more personalized um, for the students. All right. Um the um, and while we are showing you the videos uh, I'm going to stop sharing my video feed uh, so just so there are no bandwidth issues uh, going on and we can we'll have this enabled later when we are all talking together Okay, Juan, you want to move ahead? Um, yes, thanks, Pari. Okay, the next example that I want to show you is from um, Victoria's course, um, Writing 250. Um, this is a course structure that she has, uh, she used in her course. So as you can see, it might be a little small, but well, what she has structured is um, she has, at first, you know, getting started unit. So that is um, right up front and clear to the students where they need to go to get started. And um, she would put um, the information that students need to know immediately to get started in the course. And then she moves on to unit one and two and three. Um, and she decided to use unit instead of week just because her topic would cover maybe more than you know, one week at a time. And once you enter each unit, um, you'll be able to find all of, um, all of the content and activities related to that unit. Okay, okay great. Um, so the next example is sort of drilling in further down. As Juan mentioned, uh, Victoria uses uh, units, right? So uh, Yvonne, in her Finance 331 course, use, used lessons. So no matter what you use, units, lessons, or uh, modules, basically once you go inside, uh, it's it's best to sort of structure it this way, where you have um, where you have a summary of the module, what what it what this is about, uh, some objectives, what the, what the students are supposed to be accomplishing after the end of this. A, a to do list up front is always nice, and that way the students don't. Um, uh, students make sure that they they do all the activities you have for them. So this is obviously this is changeable depending upon what you have them doing, etc. But um, as long as you have some form of this going on within your unit or module or lesson, then uh, it's just very consistent for the students. It's easy for the students to understand uh, what they need to do to complete this uh, that particular uh, module of work successfully. Okay, the next example, um, I will show you a lecture example, and this is from um, 
for work and education. And she uses a screen capture called ScreenFlow, and this is on the Mac because she has something that she wants to show on screen while she is uh, talking through it. This, this is Lori Wolf, Wolf, and this, this is a session. session of EDRS 501 Educational Statistics. Within this session, we will cover uh, material that is from various chapters, chapters 5, 6, and 10, uh, in particular covering correlation and regression and Spearman's Row, working things by hand, and also then looking at both of those in terms of SPSS. Um, having your book will be helpful for um, a table that we will use, I believe it's the T-table in particular, and then uh, having handouts, the example sheet is an Excel file, and it has a couple of examples that we will use, a two-page example sheet, so we will look at that. And then there is also SPSS related to both of those examples, so we will uh, work through those examples as well, so the SPSS output documents, you want to have access to them, both the correlation and regression, and something called Spearman's Row, so we will look at that. Okay, that's just to give you an idea. So um, when she came to us, um, she wanted um, to find a solution um, for something that would kind of replicate what she educational does in, um, in her lab course, because um, she would be um, switching between these um, different applications. So um, this, uh, this is one of the solutions that we suggested to her, and, uh, and she seemed to be um, using uh, and adapting really well with her um, lesson. All right, great. So the next example we have is uh, of, a, of an example discussion forum that uh, Marian Tudor was using for uh, Social Work 575. And I wish I could zoom in on this, but uh, I am going to have the slides available to you after, uh, after the presentation is over, so you will be able to look at this a little bit better. But mainly, the way she has set it up is uh, there is a discussion forum um, for each topic she wants them to discuss. And um, if you can see just a little bit, what she has is, uh, is detailed instructions on what she wants them to discuss. So for, for example, the first one talks about uh, introduce yourself to the class. And instead of just saying that in the description of it, she says, um, tell us who you are, where you are, your major and degree status, and then discuss your interest, you know, so she gives them detailed examples of what she wants them to talk about. So talk about your interest in personal characteristics, your prior experience and interest in, you know, gerontology or older adults because her course is on aging uh, or psychological aspects of aging, etc. And then she also, in red at the bottom, she says, now respond to at least one person. So the more specific you are in, in your instructions, the better responses you will get and the better uh, better it is for the students because they will understand what your expectations are. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, the second discussion forum um, asks them to complete an aging IQ quiz and get a score and then tell people, discuss their score and, um, and discuss whether they were surprised what their aging IQ was. And, um, and she even encourages them, she says, be completely honest. Uh, because you know you, you know you may have missed something, and I just want to know your reaction, your honest reaction. So uh, the more conversational you are with your students, the more conversational they will be with you, and 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 it will encourage more engagement on their end. Okay, the next example, um, I am gonna load another video. Uh, this is also from. Um, Victoria from her writing 254. In this video, she talked about um, the difference uh, the difference between announcements and arguments. 
high writing, high writing scholars. scholars. In the last, In the last paper, paper, I noticed um, a tendency for students to make announcements instead of arguments particularly in the in the thesis statement. Now I have another video about thesis statements that you can go to if you think that that will help you. Um, but assuming that you've already read that or that you've already watched that video, I'm just going to start with the assumption that you know that thesis statements should be argument driven. Now it's hard it's easy to lapse into making announcements, especially in a paper where you're allowed to use first person. We have a tendency to say um, I am going to discuss, I am going to explore, I will look at, I will research. Um, those are announcements. They're not arguments. They're not the kind of writing that you should be doing in an advanced comp class. So let's think about the way that we might present pr the thesis statement particularly as an argument instead of as an announcement. And hopefully we'll be able to transfer that skill from the thesis statement into other sentences in our paper. When I asked Victoria um, her permission to use this, um, she mentioned that um, scripting the video um, or even just loosely write out what you say before you report is very helpful and very useful and it will help you uh, keep your focus while you record and also provide you with a script to send a student in case um, they to uh, require some accommodation. I also wanted to, before moving forward, I also wanted to say that um, Victoria uh, said that this was a good way to sort of address some of the common issues that students were facing. Uh, so, for example, if all the students were doing similar things, then instead of um, giving them feedback individually, she could just, you know, put together a quick video saying, hey, guys, you missed these things. And uh, then more specific feedback could be, of course, in writing or even in, you know, individual videos. So she does this um, sort of every, uh, after every assignment just to address some common issues. Okay, um, next I'm just, I'm just going to talk a little, a little bit about the virtual collaboration tools. Um, what you are in right now is Adobe Connect and um, of course you know you will have to contact Faye Walter. Um, she will have to, she is the one who will set up an account for you and um, get you set up and give you training and give you an overview of, of the system. Now, Pari mentioned earlier that this is a paid service, but it's not that you have to pay for it. Um, it's that you know we have a contract with Adobe, and um, we will yeah you know, we will take care of the the license issue. But um, we do have to keep track of who 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 are using this system. Um, the next one is Google Plus, and if you haven't used it um, or haven't really um, turned on Google Plus. Um, you might want to give it a try just to see what it looks like um, within Google+. Plus. Um, it is basically just like um, very similar to Facebook, just looks a little different. Um, within Google+, Plus, you also have um, Google Communities, and that would enable you to actually have um, a, like a centralized location for a course if you want to, um, and, and if you haven't... Um, heard or haven't um, tried Google Hangout, that is um, something that's very similar to Skype that will let you um, talk to anybody um, anywhere in the world and also see them at the same time, just basically video conference. Um, Skype, everybody probably already know, they're very useful, very effective um, for both chat and video chat. And there are many other types of social media out there that you may be able to use for collaboration. And there are tons and tons of other tools, especially web 2.0 tools that are free, um, that are available to use. So if you are um, looking for something to um, engage 
student or provide a platform for them to collaborate um, and um, you're not quite sure what to use, talk to Pari or talk to me about um, the tools that you might be able to use for your course. Hi guys, again, I'm Katherine Holtman and I'm in charge of the testing lab. Um, this is a, a, a picture of our testing lab. We have 22 compute testing cubicles with updated computers. It's a state-of-the-art testing lab. There's high-tech video, and we've just recently added audio surveillance for security. And there's a secure sign-in and monitoring process. I say that, but you really can't... Um, I'd really love for you guys to come over and take a little tour and kind of get the student experience uh, that your students get when they come. It will help you understand the lab and the process a little bit better. Um, if an incident were to occur where we thought there was uh, cheating of some sort, we do have the capability to send you screenshots or video and that would happen, but hopefully that won't be the case. Before the semester begins, you will hear from me probably more than once. Um, and it will either be from the Deedle at Ole Miss EDU uh, email account or from my own personal one, which is cmhultma at olemiss.edu. And you'll get a survey link. And even if you don't require proctored testing, we require that you send in the survey anyway. Um, During the semester, you'll get an email from me a week prior to your testing uh, time. So if your test starts on March 1st, you'll get an a email from me the, the Monday before, and I will bug you um, uh, asking you to turn in a hard copy to me. That means just scan and email it to me, or but you can fax it to me, and you'll have all that information. It just reminds you to look at your test settings, um, create extended time for those students that have SDS accommodations. Um, I should, the protocol is for me to get the SDS accommodations from the students first. Sometimes the student will send them to the instructor first. If the SDS accommodations don't come from me, then please forward those accommodations on to me. Um, and um, in, I guess that's about it. Emergency. Oh, in case of emergency, I think I already said that, submit a hard copy of your exam. Emergencies don't happen very often, but they do happen at least once a semester, twice last semester. It's already happened once this semester. And, you know, Murphy's Law is that if you don't submit your exam, then it'll happen during your exam time. So just please, uh, and I'll email you and remind you of that, but you can scan and send it or fax it to me. Thanks. All right, so the next steps are going to be, um, you know, obviously finish, finish out your online instructor training if you haven't already in Blackboard. Uh, once all your activities are done and um, we have a record of that, you will receive a certificate of um, a certificate, basically, which is a certified online instructor from our office. So that's always good to have. Um, then regarding building your course, you know, keep building that in your sandbox, uh, like we say in the course. But uh, try to, if you are on campus in Ole Miss, uh, it would be great to uh, great to sort of meet one on one with myself or Juan, uh, just to give us an idea. You might you might do very well on your own you know, with the course design and everything like that. But uh, we like to meet our instructors <clears throat> anyway, so uh, to have a face to the name and as well as you know that way, um, if you need anything, we can help you out with anything. If you if you get some ideas by watching the examples or if you have your own ideas, and we'll, we're going to about. We're going to talk about that here uh, in a little bit. I'm about to open this up for discussion. Um, so just meet with us one-on-one, -on -one and that's always good to know. Um, 
as you saw the intro example, uh, try to try to think about having a course intro video for your course, a short like three to five minute introduction about yourself and your course. Uh, we have a, a student worker who is a videographer who will contact you, uh, or you can hit us up, me or Juan, and say, hey, I want to shoot this intro video with your videographer. Of course, you know if you are um, if you like to direct your own uh, videos, then you can you can shoot your own video just. Just make sure that any audio video that you have in your course must be transcribed or have closed captions. Uh, this is just required for to to address all accessibility issues, and so we don't get um, a lawsuit on our hands. Uh, and we can help with uh, the transcription process, the captioning process. For our online instructors, uh, we have a service that we can use. So so talk to us if you um, if you need help with this. All right. Um, now I'm just going to open it up for any Q&A or, or open discussions. And I'm about to enable audio and video for everybody. So uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some of you or, or hear some of you. And then you can always type uh, your questions in the chat window if you don't have um, a webcam or, or a microphone. Yeah, I think Renee has a question. Um, I think Catherine um, would probably be able to answer this a little bit uh, in terms of the regional campuses um, and the testing lab at other regional campuses. Juan, can you um, can you just read out the question? I, I can't see it. It's too far away. OK, Renee asked about um, other campuses and their testing lab. And she asked if um, if their testing lab would work similarly um, to the DITL testing lab. Yes, it does. And I communicate with them quite frequently, Renee. Um, although we use a separate appointment scheduler, um, and I don't have access to their appointment scheduler, um, we do work simil similarly. And when you turn in your passwords to me, I turn in those to the regionals. I'm in contact with them quite frequently, um, except for actually making their appointments. I communicate all of your information to them for you. Does that answer your question? Okay, so Lacey asked that she has not made it, made it far in the lessons yet, but will we learn how to set up the tests? Okay, so Lacey, yes. Uh, I think module six uh, of the online instructor training course is all about proctor testing and uh, how to set up the tests and how to create extended tests, etc. So you should learn how to do that. And there is an activity which once which makes you create a test of your own uh, in your sandbox. So you should you should uh, learn how to do that. And then if you have any questions, you can always email us. So I have now enabled um, audio for all of you. So feel free to you know, speak into your microphone if you want to as well. And Nichelle, I can see you. So hey, good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> She's talking back in here. OK, great. Uh, Juan, do we have any? Um, Nichelle, are you are you asking us something? Because uh, I don't think we can hear you. You yeah, might have to. We can't hear you. We might have to click on the uh, the microphone button on the top. The um. The... It's on the top. Can you hear me now? We yes. can hear you. Yes. Oh. Is it too loud? Uh. That's okay. You can. It's a little bit loud, but that's okay. We can adjust some speaker volume here. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just asking when Lori uses the screen flow, does she do that live or does she record it and upload it for the student? Um, she pre-recorded everything. So um, okay. in studio, uh, when you record the screen um, after you stop recording, you have option to just edit anything out. And okay. uh, she, 
I mean, if she wanted to, she could also pause and then come back and report from where she left off as well. Is that an app or a website? It is a program um, that you install on your computer. Okay. Okay. I also wanted to say that um, whenever you do record lectures like that um, for your for your course, it's best to keep them uh, between 10 and 15 minutes. Yeah. And, uh, so, so don't try to do 40, 45 minute lectures because you lose. The students will just not watch it. <laughs> so. I use a voiceover now without the video, and I try to keep them till about 10 to 15 because if I go longer, they complain to me. <laughs> So I do, I do know that. Okay. Okay, great. So have you, um, okay, how, so we have a question. How does the transcription program work? Is it easy? So, so Wendy, um, first of all, if you, if you start from a script, then uh, all we have to do is, you know, sort of sync up the script with the video or audio that you have. But, um, but if you have a video or audio which doesn't have a script already, um, then as long as you put it up on YouTube, um, what we can do is we have a third-party service provider, so we can uh, we can give them your video and they will transcribe it for us. And right now, the service is provided by Outreach for online instructors only. I'm not sure how long it will last, but uh, so that, that the transcription process right now works works like that. But it's best to start with a script and not uh, not have to use it. But if you have to use it, then it's uh, you know just give us um, give us uh, some advance notice. So, in, for example, if you're going to um, you know make a video or audio piece available, say a week later, then give it to us like a week in advance. So two weeks in advance is usually good because their turnaround time is about five to seven days. Do we need to have the courses done by a certain time? Like, I'm doing mine for a file course. Do I need to have everything completed by a certain date? Um, it's always good to good to try to do it at least two weeks in advance. And that way, what, what happens is we can, as instructional designers, just kind of go through it and make sure everything works, nothing is broken, and stuff like that. So um, the the sooner you have it, the better. But I would just at least two weeks in advance. Okay. But I would say, you know, if you can get as much done um, as possible, that would probably be the best because you know, once we um, get to meet with you and uh, we sit down and um, look through the course, um, well, we yeah, we we are going to meet with you um, along the way anyway, but. Um, Okay. In case you know, you you never know when you, how much time you're gonna need developing a new um, content. Um, and I I've I've seen a lot of people coming back and say, I didn't think it's gonna take this long. So <laughs> so it can take a long time. So just just be aware of that and um, plan for um, something that might take a little longer. I did some things with this course when I taught it last fall. Will I be able to copy it like I do my other courses in Blackboard into the sandbox, or is that a different setup? Can I copy my course, some of the stuff I did from last fall, into this online setup? Okay. Um, yes, yes, you can, but because your course from last fall probably doesn't have the same template, um, for the structure mm -hmm. that we have set up. So mm -hmm. after we do the course copy, we might, you know, we, we, we're going to have to help you um, restructure the course or maybe you know, change the layout or structure in a way that um, if, if, you, if you would like to continue using the, the template that we loaded up for you, then you know, we will certainly can help you with that. Okay. All right. Well, if uh, nobody else has any questions, I have a question for you, for you guys. Um, have you found um, any special challenges, you know, while going through the instructor training course, or 
or just thinking about your online course or even uh, you know teaching an online course before uh, are there any particular challenges you're worried about or have you know encountered in the past or we would like to know that Okay, there is an echo problem. Wendy, I think it might be because I have enabled microphones for all participants. So let me try disabling that and because nobody's using it anyway. Or all of you guys, if you go to that microphone symbol symbol and then just kind of click on it, it will mute it. If you try muting your microphones, uh, that might help. So Juan, we have a challenge. Um, okay, Wendy, so my question was, uh, if you can, hopefully you can hear me better this time. So my question was that, um, uh, have you, what do you, what do you think are the challenges? What have you found to be the challenges uh, in thinking about your online course or if you have taught an online course before, uh, you know, or while going through this instructor training or listening to this presentation, what do you, what are the challenges that you think you will have trying to build this course um, for your students. So that was my question and, and, and then Renee came back with, uh, with her answer. She said that one challenge is uh, coming up with activities for students uh, to do so it just isn't a self-study class. Juan, do you have any insights? Yeah, I think uh, Renee, it depends on um, what you want um, the students to be able to achieve. Um, do you have any anything that is a little more specific? Oh, so, Juan, you may have to speak a little bit louder. Yes, Rene, I was asking um, that, you know, you said coming up with uh, with activities for students is, um, that's not just self-study. So I ask um, if you can be more specific about what you would like the students to achieve in um, doing those activities. Also, if any other instructors, you know, any of you all have any uh, any input on Renee's question, or you know, one, you can just feel free to jump in the conversation.
Okay, Renee said um, the class she's going to teach next is a problem solving um, math ed course. How do I get them to interact? Okay, yeah, interacting and math is actually quite a challenge. <laughs> uh, well, uh, normally in a math classroom, um, you you would have um, students individually solve problems. Um, now with math education, I'm sorry. Um, with math education, um, if this is something you, that you would model the students. Um, uh, some kind of modeling, te te um, model teaching. Um, you can maybe um, try to get them to do maybe a reporting of how how they would teach a certain math problem to a student. That's what I'm thinking. Um, kind of model of a teaching and not just um, really solving the problem. Um, in terms of um, problem solving with math, um, I know that uh, students can solve problems on their own, but um, putting them in the study group might help them with collaboration as well. Also, Renee, uh, we can we can work with you to uh, identify some specific online activities. There are some there are some uh, you know education related activities online specifically to your area and stuff like that. So we can we can try to research some of those and see if those work work well with your um, with your class too. So regarding uh, and also Renee, regarding your question about the students doing video uh, on their own, if you do them through Adobe Connect, then you have to be pre present, and that's why Juan covered some of the other tools, for example, Google Plus Hangouts or or Skype, where students can sort of uh, collaborate amongst themselves without having the moderator or the teacher, uh, you know. Um, around to, to open up the meeting room for them. For, for example, right now, if I log out, as, if Ole Miss Online, sort of who's the host, logs out, then all of you cannot talk to each other. So other tools are, yes, yeah, Skype, Skype or Google Hangouts are good tools. OK, Nacho said, said she had to go, and she's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Renee, could I come to where you are for an appointment to do that? Definitely. We are in Canard, top floor. Um, you can just send me an email um, or give me a call. It's WLA. Let me just type in there. W-L-A-T-A-R-T-A -A -T -A -A at That would be great, Renee, because then you could see the testing lab and kind of see um, the student experience in the testing lab from uh, making the appointment through um, you know, taking the test, you can see how the tests are proctored and the surveillance and um, just get a better feel for the student experience. I think that always helps the instructors. Okay, sounds good. We will we'll try to, um, we'll see you next week then, Renee. Um, also wanted to say that, uh, you know, I'm, I am going to email this presentation to every one of you and I'll, I'll have contact info for all three of us. Uh, email and phone numbers, etc. So, you know, uh, so don't worry about if you if you lose one's email, you know, I'll have it to you in my email to you. So, okay. Any other questions before we um, conclude the session? Oh yeah, I'm going to also I'm going to open up the poll again because we have a few more participants. Actually, we lost a few, but maybe uh, Mo can chime in and add his input to it. So. 
if you can see the poll and just participate if you haven't already that would be great we're just trying to get an idea of uh, the comfort level of all our instructors okay great Awesome. Okay, well, thank, thank you all for attending, um, and um, I'm sure we'll see you in the online instructor training, and whenever you come see us over here in Canard, come, come get a tour of the testing lab and see Catherine and, and me or, uh, or Juan. Have a great day. Have a great week. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.